a warning from your brain. You know, the average person's attention span has shrunk to just 8 seconds. That's shorter than a goldfish. Think about that. Most of you will click away from this video long before the end, drawn to a notification, a new video, or just the endless scroll. I don't blame you. We're all feeling it. That restless urge to check your phone. The inability to just sit still. This phenomenon has a name, and it's a term you've probably heard. Brain rot. It sounds like a joke, like internet slang, but the effects are real. My own mind feels it. I find it harder to read books, to focus on a movie, or to simply think without distraction. It's terrifying, but I can't quit social media because it's my job. So, I thought, what better way to understand this than to study it and share everything I learn with you? For those of you who stay, thank you. This is important. Because if we don't understand how our minds are reacting to this digital world, we risk losing the very capacities, our focus, our creativity, our ability to think deeply, that make us human. The science behind the slang, a deeper look. The slang term brain rot is rooted in documented scientific phenomena. It's not a medical diagnosis, but it's a powerful description of what's happening to our brains. At its core, it's about our brain's ancient wiring being exploited by modern technology. Our brains are a marvel of evolution, honed over millions of years to help us survive. A key component is our dopamine reward system, which evolved to signal important things like finding food or avoiding danger. Digital platforms are engineered to hack this system. Every notification, every like, every swipe is a tiny powerful dose of dopamine. This creates a relentless cycle of seeking rewards. It's a form of intermittent reinforcement, similar to a slot machine where the unpredictable reward keeps us engaged and coming back for more. This constant stimulation has tangible effects on our cognitive abilities. Research shows a direct link between excessive screen time and a decline in working memory, the part of your brain that holds and processes information in the short term. When we're constantly switching tasks, our brain never gets the chance to consolidate information into long-term memory. This leads to what some researchers call just-in-time memory, where we rely on the Internet as an external hard drive, eroding our ability to recall facts and ideas on our own. For children, this is particularly dangerous. Their brains are in a critical period of development, especially the prefrontal cortex, which controls executive functions like impulse control and decision-making. Overexposure to constant, high-speed content can negatively impact this development, leading to issues with emotional regulation and a decreased tolerance for boredom, once considered the breeding ground for creativity. The unseen dangers of the feed and the algorithmic echo chamber. The effects of brain rot go beyond simple cognitive decline. They're also shaping our social and cultural landscape in ways we're only beginning to understand. The digital platforms we use are built to be as engaging as possible. And they do this by creating a highly personalized, but also highly manipulative, experience. Algorithms are designed to show you what you already like, creating a feedback loop where your own interests are constantly reinforced. This is known as an algorithmic echo chamber, and it can lead to a distorted view of the world. It preys on a cognitive bias called confirmation bias, where we tend to seek out information that confirms our pre-existing beliefs. This is a powerful force that is fragmenting our society and making it harder for us to understand and empathize with people who hold different viewpoints. Furthermore, 
The design of these platforms promotes a new kind of social and cultural currency. We're seeing a rise in what's been dubbed brain rot language. Phrases like Riz, Gayat, and No Cap aren't just slang. They are low-context cultural packets that spread instantly. This creates a new social pressure. To be in the know, you must consume content constantly, and this encourages mindless consumption. You might feel left out of the conversation if you don't understand these references, and this encourages you to keep scrolling. The deeper cost, creativity, identity, and mental health. The effects of brain rot aren't just about attention span and memory. They're also deeply tied to our mental well-being and our sense of self. One of the most significant casualties of constant digital stimulation is the loss of boredom and mental silence. Our ancestors had long periods of quiet reflection, which allowed their minds to wander and connect disparate ideas. This is where true creativity and insight are born. By filling every spare moment with a phone or a screen, we are starving our brains of this essential time to process, reflect, and innovate. We're replacing deep, meaningful thought with an endless stream of shallow entertainment. In a world of constant digital performance, our sense of self can become tied to our online presence. Our identity becomes a curated version of ourselves for public consumption, and our self-worth is measured in likes, shares, and comments. This can lead to anxiety, depression, and a constant need for external validation. The more we seek validation from our digital selves, the less connected we become to our authentic, offline selves. Taking Back Control a call to action for all. So, are we doomed? Our brains are incredibly adaptable. Neuroplasticity works both ways. We can retrain our minds and fight back against the effects of brain rot. It takes conscious effort. Mindful consumption. Don't just scroll, be intentional. Before you open an app, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Or, what am I learning? Turn passive consumption into an active, thoughtful process. The Power of Boredom Intentionally schedule time to do absolutely nothing. Go for a walk without your phone. Sit quietly. This isn't a waste of time. It's a critical act of digital detox that allows your brain to reset its dopamine baseline and encourages creativity. Digital Friction Our environments are designed for easy distraction. You need to create friction. Turn off all non-essential notifications. Put your phone in another room while you work. Make it harder to get to the distracting apps. Remember, our ancestors survived by paying close attention. Today, our very well-being depends on relearning how to pay attention. We don't have to reject technology, but we must protect the things that make us human. After this video, try not to click away immediately. Sit quietly for a minute. It's a small act that can help you reclaim a piece of your mind from the endless scroll.